welcome to Half the Battle. You know, we've been going for 25 episodes now, so inevitably we can get things wrong. And when you say we, you mean you. Yes, I can get things wrong even after doing exhaustive research on the internet. You mean doing a three minute Google search. Shut up. Anyway, you're gonna see something now that you haven't seen before. Someone is gonna admit they're wrong on the internet. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. So enjoy the top 10 screw ups of Have the Battle. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Holy crap, it's the last angry geek! Are you... are you angry with me? No, and that's not what my name means anyway. It's just that... a top 10 list? Really? What's wrong with top 10 lists? Everybody does them! Exactly, it's been done a million times! Let me give you some friendly advice, kid. You can't be afraid to try original stuff. Do your own thing and you'll do fine. You know, you're right. I'm gonna try that. Excellent. You'll go far, kid. Kid? I'm pretty sure I'm just as old as you. It's a metaphor. So are we agreed? No top ten lists? Agreed. No top ten lists. After this one. <sighs> hey, look, I've got the script all written and I've got a deadline. Oh, well, just this once then. What do you do anyway? I review G.I. Joe. <laughs> you still play with towels? A actually, they're called action figures. They're dolls, Timmer. Yes, sir. Anyway, good luck with that. I'm off to do grown-up stuff. Now, where did I put those back issues of Muppet Babies comics? Ah. Well, thanks very much. And hey, if you ever want to do a crossover, I'll have my people call your people. You have people? Um, I have a ghost. Yeah, I'll have my ghost call your cloak. We're in a weird business, aren't we? Tell me about it. Anyway, let's get started with the top 10 screw-ups of half the battle. But your bollocks did up good, you did. Number 10, the cursor in my Annihilator review. Now, this is something small and easily overlooked. That's why it's at the bottom of the list, but... It's still something that's been bugging me ever since I spotted it. When discussing the cartoon parts of my Annihilator review, you can see my cursor on screen. Now, I'm not really a perfectionist, but this still annoyed me. Still, it's a pretty small thing, so let's move on. But your bollocks did up good, you did. Number 9. Missing the reference to the man from UNCLE in my review of The Spy Who Rooked Me. Ah, my review of the G.I. Joe episode that spoofed James Bond. There was a running gag in that cartoon episode where the secret agent kept referring to Auntie, the organization he worked for. Yes, Auntie's always there when you need her. I even commented on this several times without getting the joke. It was a gift from Auntie. You know, I'm pretty sure that if Bond ever called M. Auntie, she'd start removing some of his body parts. It's an obvious reference to the Man From UNCLE TV series, and it just went right by me. In my defense, I've never actually seen the Man From UNCLE television series. I've only heard about it. Still, I should have spotted the reference. Buffoons. But your bollocks did up good, you did. Number 8. Cobra did have a spaceship at the time they created the Astro Viper. Oh boy, this is the one that I got the most comments about by far, and with good reason. During my Astro Viper review, I went on a rant about Cobra having no spaceships to fight the Defiant or to get Astro Vipers into space. I kept going on and on about it. As it turns out, I missed a stellar stiletto, a space fighter, for Cobra, that was released the same year as the Astro Viper. Well, to be fair, I didn't exactly miss it, I dismissed it. Since my few memories of it were from the comic appearances, and I didn't remember it ever going into space. What I should have done is look at the back of the damn box of the toy. It says quite clearly that it's to take on the G.I. Joe Defiant Space Complex. 
And when you're too stupid to look at the back of your own damn toys, you know you've screwed up. You're not just a fool, you're Cobra's cat! Insufficient, inexcusable! When your bollocks did up good, you did! Number 7. I didn't kill off Sean Bean. In my review of the comic book issue, see what I did there, Panic at the North Pole, I showed a brief clip of Sean Bean. Unfortunately, I forgot the Constitution clearly has an amendment in it decreeing that Sean Bean must die in everything he appears in. This includes review shows. No, really, go check it out. It's somewhere in the footnotes. So, let me fix this mistake right now. There, crisis over. Let's all move on with our lives. But your bollocks did up good, you did. Number six. There are in fact more than two Native Americans in GI Joe. During my Airborne review, I stated that he and Spirit were the only two Native Americans in GI Joe. I was wrong. First of all, there was a figure released in 2002 who was also a Native American. But, since my show only deals with the characters from the original toy line, I can dismiss that one. What I can't dismiss, however, is Altitude, a character I've already reviewed, who turns out to be, yup, full-blooded Apache. When I stumbled onto this when doing research for the Altitude review, I literally facepalmed. And, you know, I can't even promise this will never happen again, since I don't know all the file cards by heart. And your bollocks did up good, you did. Number 5. A shyster doesn't just refer to a lawyer. During my Alpine review, I went to great lengths to make an Irwin R. Shyster joke. And then I ranted about him being an accountant, and not a lawyer, so he shouldn't be called shyster. I have since found out that a shyster doesn't just refer to lawyers, but it's a term for someone who acts in a disreputable, unethical, or unscrupulous way, especially in the practice of law, politics, or business. In my very feeble defense, I got the definition of shyster from one episode of The West Wing. Still, a single word Google search would have solved everything. Clearly did not do the research. But your bollocks did up good, you did. Number four. Various typos. Uh, yeah, not much to say about this one. I really should check stuff I'm writing more thoroughly. But your bollocks did up good, you did. Number three, the lighting in the Arrow Viper review. You want to know why my wall is lighting up like that? Well, that's part of the joys of being a brand new video producer. I left my television on, but. Honestly, who would have thought that a light from a TV would show up on camera? Oh, that's right. Anybody who isn't a complete moron! Still, well, I'll never make that mistake again, and my lighting will continue to improve. But your bollocks did up good, you did. Number two. A lot of crap that's in frame when it shouldn't be. At various times in my reviews, you'll see stuff on screen that really isn't supposed to be there. From drink bottles, to TV remotes, to even the freaking script. The worst offender though, which embarrassingly enough shows up as late as my Astro Viper review from two freaking weeks ago, is a strange flat surface at the bottom of some segments. You wanna know what causes that? Well, let me show you. Say hello to my so-called camera stand. A bucket with a thick book on it. The Complete Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, in case you're curious. And that's how this show got started. One man, a bucket, and his dreams. But your bollocks did up good, you did. And the number one screw-up of half the battle is... He just kept talking in one long, incredibly unbroken sentence, moving from topic to topic so that no one had a chance to interrupt. It was really quite hypnotic. <laughs> Hey hey, welcome to Half the Battle. My voiceovers! After getting some constructive criticism, I went back and watched all my old stuff. And holy crap, I surprised myself by how monotonous and 
boring I sounded in my voiceovers. Making matters even worse was that, well, up until the beginning of this year, practically everything I did was in voiceover, including the live action bits. That's one of the reasons I wear a mask, so I wouldn't have to lip sync. In case you're wondering, I did everything in voiceover because, well, to be honest, I wasn't really that confident I could speak in front of the camera. Thankfully, I've gotten over that. So now I'm livening up my voice work and strive to keep improving it week by week. So, those were the top 10 screw-ups of half the battle. But remember, to err is human, to forgive and keep watching my stuff, divine. See you next week, everybody, when we start the next 25 episodes. Anyway, good luck with that. I'm off to do grown-up stuff. Like watch movies full of violence, nudity, and lots of swearing. <laughs> oh. Yes, I can get things wrong either. Either. <laughs> Look, I can't even promise this will never happen again because, well, I don't know all the fail fail cards. Damn it! I deserve that. <laughs>